He was on his knees in the alley in the back, and they were staring like, cut his ear off! Cut his ear off, Dush Anthony! And he goes, yeah, man, I want to do it, but, you know, they were all yelling, so... I was just like, fuck it, man, I cut his ear off. And he... And today the topic is crime. You might know him from this popular podcast on Sirius and iTunes called Race Wars. Please give it up for Mr. Kurt Metzger, everybody. I relate to Ari because he was going to be a rabbi. And uh, I was a minister. I actually was a minister. I was a Jehovah's Witness. And uh, I was born into it. Is anybody raised religious in here? This is two different stories, by the way, that connect in a very weird way. You were? What were you? Pentecostal. Oh, that's the natural vampires versus werewolves of Jehovah Witnesses. Oh, they don't like us. You know why? I, I used to live down south. They didn't like me because I didn't believe in hell. Like, why would you get mad at me for that? Well, people hear it and they're like, oh, you can't do your birthdays and, uh, I don't know, Prince. Those are the two things. <laughs> It's not well known. It's just a regular doomsday cult. It's no big deal. Um, but I'm not bitter against it. And I, I, you know, I kind of appreciate it, you know, because it, it really taught me how to lie, you know? Like, if you raise religious, that's what it really gives you, the life skill of, like, who to lie to and when and why. Like, you, you can't get that from a secular education. You need, like, higher stakes, you know? to really act like your life depends on it, you know? Because your immortality fucking depends on it. So that's when you really learn, right? It's a valuable skill to have. I'm sure you got it in spades, right? You were like, were you one of them like, blah, 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 those guys? Yeah. So that's the, you see how you learn? You first, you tell yourself, this is God's language. That, you tell yourself that, and that's reality. So other lies come easy once you know how to do that magic, right? And you get like a secret life. And you know, when, when religious people go bad, everyone jumps on them, because they think you're not supposed to sin, but it, they're really just doing shit everybody does. It's just they built it up so much that they're not that kind of person. So that's why it's so devastating. You're in your head, you're like, I'm not a guy that does that's like this, right? So when I grew up out of the, the church I was in, I realized everybody was doing like soap opera, epic, just fucking and all kinds of crazy shit that I had no idea as a kid. Like, I'm the sucker that followed it, I felt like. Because I really did, you know? Like, I was, I was told never to masturbate ever, like that religious. Like an adult said, you should never, <laughs> never. If all goes perfectly, you will have never masturbated. That, an adult said, with a straight face said that to me. And uh, yeah, do, do you know what happened, by the way, to a grown man, just medically, if he never, Masturbated? No, nobody knows. It's never been attempted by anyone. But I'm supposed to be the first man in history to not jerk my dick off. Like Kurt, we did. You could be the chosen one. So we've all those are we've all failed. You know? <laughs> yeah, but it's that kind of stuff, right? And uh, so. But ours was, like, what's especially hard about Jehovah's Witnesses, or, uh, or why what people might think it's culty is, you have to do it, okay? That's what made the hardest part about the religion. It's not like, like Catholics I always envied, because that's like so great, you just get to be Catholic, you don't have to do nothing, <laughs> right? What are you gonna do? You watch like mafia movies, you never see him take the guy, hey, uh, Mr. Soprano, don't come to this church no more, because you're a murderer. You know, they don't say that, it's cool. We had to do ours or you get this fellowship, right? Which is like cast out. And all your friends are in the congregation. They said it, it's, it's set up that way. Your real friends are in your, or Jehovah's Witness. The rest of you are nice, like we could be acquaintances, but you know, God's gonna exterminate you off this earth, so <laughs> don't get too attached. 
I, you seem like nice people, but I mean, we didn't have hell though, but it was still a, a, all, everything on you. So people would have secret lives, right? So this is the first, this is about a sex crime, this story. And uh, yeah, yeah. Um, when I was uh, eight, <laughs> my brother was born and my mom's best friend in the, in the church, her son babysat me, he was 13, okay? We'll call him Josh. And uh, he was like, he was like an adult to me because I was eight, you know, he was 13 year old. And when I think back on that, it's funny because he was like really skinny. It's the 80s, so he's got like a Luke Skywalker butt cut kind of hair, right? And he's fuck Jeffrey Dahmer glasses that everybody had. And uh, real skinny with like really high shorts, okay? And uh, so he, I was just alone with him the whole day. And uh, he didn't molest me or something. We just watched the, had to watch the Honeymooners, which I didn't care for because I was eight. That's not the sex crime. That, it went fine. We just we spent the day together. He was a nice church boy. He wasn't anything. Um, so, but a few years later, he, when he got to high school, he started working out a lot, this guy. And, uh, but just his top. He was one of those dudes, right? And it was before people really started calling you on that. So he really... I mean, he did steroids. I don't know if he just shot the steroids on the top part like that. I don't know what he did. But he... Just gigantic, but the same legs I remember from 13. And the same hair, but it was just smaller on his big steroid head now. But he was a hulking man now. He was like 17. And uh, you know, everybody was like, Jesus, Josh is huge. Like, we were all just very impressive, right? And uh, then, even more impressive, <laughs> he ended up uh, banging his, ge his geometry teacher. Yeah. His geometry teacher, uh, I guess statutory raped him. <laughs> And they didn't really charge you back then, you know? <laughs> they just handled it at the school. She got fired and uh, she got divorced. And then uh, it was a big scandal because I heard about it through the, the Jehovah Witness grapevine, <laughs> right? That was the, the gossip. And uh, so the developments were amazing when they come in. But then the most amazing development was she decided she wanted to study the Bible with Jehovah's Witnesses. So they have to let you. <laughs> so guess what? She started, she started coming into the church. And uh, you know, Josh's mom wasn't too thrilled, but what's she gonna do? She just can't say nothing about it. And uh, then they got married. She studied, this is over a four year period. She became a Jehovah's Witness and they married and became a nice uh, Christian couple. She was real hot too. She was like a real, before even the m word MILF was a thing, like she was that. And she was like, like it was the sisters of the congregation that were like giving her the side. The brother's like, that kid's awesome. Like, first of all, He's got a great upper body. Start with that. <laughs> Had the same haircut for over eight years. You know, it wasn't as much a thing for, I remember my dad like, and uh, yeah, so that's the end of that. That's, <laughs> that sex crime just ended with a nice church couple, basically. <laughs> a little May, December <laughs> romance. Uh, and then, so then, this is the second story, which for some reason that I don't understand relates to that story. And it shouldn't. But uh, when I got, I was like 19 and I got out of high school and I wanted to, I didn't go to college, I wanted to like have a job for some reason first. And uh, I worked at this place called Funco Land, which is, uh, they sell video, it's called GameSpot now. I don't know why I looked at you like you would know, dude. <laughs> this backyard wrestler understands what I'm saying. It's a video game store. Okay, and uh, I, I got hired as assistant manager right away by this guy, uh, Ricardo, let's call him. He was this Puerto Rican guy who was 30 when I was 19, and he was, uh, he was also a Jehovah's Witness from the Spanish congregation, okay? And, uh, but he just like, we just got along, so he hired me as assistant manager. And I was a jerk off, you know? But uh, he had a violent temper and would yell at me until I did the job good. <laughs> and, uh, and he was like really light-skinned, blue-eyed Puerto Rican guy from the island, so he looked down on anybody from here I don't know if you know the politics of that, of like Puerto Ricans versus other Puerto Rican kind of people, but it's intense. And, uh, but he would like call me white boy a lot, but he was like very white, you know? And, uh, and we would play fighting games and he would break his controllers because he thought I was being too cheap. He goes, you cheap me out, man. Why don't you be a man? And he'd break his controller. <laughs> he broke like three controllers. Talking like Mandy Patinkin from The Princess Bride to me. You kill my father! <laughs> so, but he did really man me up. I gotta give it to him. And then I, he ended up getting fired for something, but I became the manager and he trained me. So now 
I'm like 20, and I'm the manager of Funco Land. And uh, I live with my parents, and I make $24,000 a year, so that's pretty awesome, you know? And uh, I had to hire an assistant manager. And uh, the guy that I hired, uh, I interviewed a whole bunch of people. And with, you know, retail, with a job like that, you just want to find someone you could hang out with, right? That's really your main. How they won't steal too much, and uh, you know? That's all you're looking for, because it's a nightmare. You know how retail is? That, like, that just that, you know, you have the store greeting. Great day, Funko Land. You have to say that. Like, they think people want that. And then they have snitches that call to make sure you're telling people you're having a great fucking day at Funko. I had a great day. Yes, great leader. I'm a... So, but because I was religious, I was good at that kind of sh that stuff, you know? Little stupid rules for no reason that you have to follow. It, I had training from the Bible. So I hired this guy, he was from Philly, this black guy from Philly, and uh, he was older than me too, and he was like, he was just the first guy that I just like got along with really well, okay? And he was like pretty hood from like, and now, you know, now I live in a straight up ghetto, so it's not new to me now, but if you're from the suburbs and have no, you know, you have maybe black friends if you're white, but they're not like what you imagine from TV, right? This is like, come, this is the TV coming to work for me. You know? It's not all like guys with a sideways gun, there's levels of it. There's like, there's hustler guys and like, there's white collar of that shit. So he was that, he was a smarter, so, uh, yeah, he had been a, 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 like an enforcer for this crack dealer in Philly. Like he had to go, he told me he had to like get people. And uh, <laughs> yeah, and I think it's this chick that I saw in Gangland, I just put it together recently, <laughs> called the Queen Pen, because I'm like, as a female, as the timeline works, I think that's who it was, now looking back. Um, yeah, so like if you owed like a small amount of money, he would come just mess you up, and because uh, you have to, that's how that, that economy, you can't let that go. You know, they, you'll be dead. You have to ha send this, send, uh, let's call him Deshantony. You have to send Deshantony. Let's just mix all the names together. Deshantony. Um, but he had been a violin prodigy, okay? I swear to God, this is his story. He was a violin prodigy that tested out of Dum Dum School that he was in. And they put him in an arts high school because he was like a, some kind of mega IQ guy and he just hung out with bad people and, and just dropped out of that school and became a crack enforcer. <laughs> and uh, he told me he had, the reason he moved was he was going after this one guy who was real big and he got kind of close to the guy and the guy just hit him without warning and like cracked his rib or something. And he said like he felt like crying. He's like, yeah, actually fuck it, I cried a little bit. <laughs> and, uh, and then he, gets, he ran up and like kicked this dude in the chest and the guy didn't get up. So he uh, moved to my, my town and worked for me at Funko Land. <laughs> yeah, that, all of this I learned in the interview, by the way. Did I mention that? This was all told during the interview process. I mean, it was riveting. You know, it's like a Netflix series. I'm like, you're hired right now. So it was like awesome to hang out with this dude. And uh, he did, he's into like martial arts and, and stuff. So he would like, we would go to like flea markets and buy like, it's like hanging out with Wesley Snipes or something. We could buy karate weapons, <laughs> impractical karate weapons that you would never use. And he would show me how to play with them and like, like all, all kinds of like stuff that, I'm not supposed to do none of this stuff because I'm a Jehovah's Witness. I can't play with violent. I couldn't even have guns on my Star Wars men. My mom took the guns off my Star Wars men. So I just had men. Thanks for the men. So finally, someone's giving me some man time. So, uh, yeah, so he, uh, some part way, and he was a great employee. He, he was like, sell all the commissionable stuff really fast, and the customers loved him, because he was a charming dude, he was great. And, uh, and he was very like, supportive, uh, like he was always building up my self-esteem. <laughs> And uh, what, later I worked in Jersey City and these guys, I ended up getting in a fight with some people and I thought they were gonna kill me because that's a bad area and he drove up with a gun to just watch me. <laughs> like, cool, he, he, was a he was a down, he was a down dude. So he started selling crack on the side to supplement his Funko Land income, okay? <laughs> it was Bricktown, New Jersey, so he was like the only game in town. And uh, now he had an enforcer 
who was called Zumo, okay? I, hadn't, I never met him, but would just imagine that, hearing that name, Zumo, and he, uh, he would complain about Zumo. <laughs> he was like, Zumo smokes too much product, and he's too violent, okay? He just beat this guy to death. Like, because he wasn't like a gangster in his head. He was like, I'm in Bricktown, just a little side. I just sell crack to friends, man. <laughs> he wasn't like, you know, starting an empire. And meanwhile, Zumo is like some maniac, but you'd always have a new terrible... And this guy, Deshaunty, had done some, some shit himself. Like, he told me he cut a guy's ear off once. Somebody had robbed him. Like, he got mugged and didn't know he was connected to this lady, so her, his boys found the guy at a club and called him over there, and he was on his knees in the alley in the back, and they were staring like, cut his ear off! Cut his ear off, Deshaunty! <laughs> and, uh, and, and we were putting games away while he's telling me. And he, goes, and he goes, yeah, man, I want to do it, but, you know, they were all yelling, so. I was just like, fuck it, man, I cut his ear off. And I, I'm put, I was putting away Bubsy 2 for Sega Genesis. On the wall, as I remember the, the happy cat. Oh, how bad did he cut his ear? But it was just fascinating, and I, and I, you know, I'm a church kid, so that's amazing to me, just anything like that. So I love hanging out with them, but I was always like, what if, you know, I know Moses were alive and saw, like just some weird bible shit they put in your head. They told us to imagine Bible characters are watching you. So I'm like, what if Moses saw? <laughs> but I'm not supposed to be hanging out with this person, okay, at all. Like a friend like that, okay? He's not one of us and he sells crack and he has a Zumo working for him. <laughs> I, get, I get disfellowshipped if somebody found out. That's where you're like out of the th thing. That's like uh, dis disconnecting or whatever, right? And uh, so I'm at his house, we're playing with butterfly knives that we bought. <laughs> and he showed me how to do all the cool, I don't know how to do all them, I could do all them, because this guy showed me. And uh, while I'm doing that, I hear bang, 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 bang on his door, like a violent, that I felt like someone was coming to get me in trouble for not playing. <laughs> like that it was such a nerve wracking sound. And uh, he goes, oh man, Zumo's here. <laughs> I'm like, oh shit. Now I'm in too deep, because. <laughs> I tell you, just hang out with him without ever, you know? And uh, so, door opens up, and uh, it, it's fucking Josh, that guy that babysat me and fucked his teacher. Uh, in addition to already an impressive resume, <laughs> by nights he controls the streets as Zuma. Yeah. I, I couldn't believe it. We were both like, man, what are you doing here? <laughs> yeah. And then uh, him and uh, that, that teacher ended up getting divorced because he's a crackhead. That's the end. <laughs> All right, that's my story. Thanks.